In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come to God, the Father of us all. Come to Christ, our brother by adoption. Come as people of hope. Let us join together in confessing our sin, our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended to hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended in heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship. We're glad that you're here today. Um, just want to say a special thank you for all who participated with Vacation Bible School and the many people that went into helping with it. Uh, if you're interested in seeing any of it, it is on our website under the Youth tab. We still have those videos um, available. Um, also, just make a note of the things that we have coming up in the next few weeks on your calendar. Do we have any other announcements this morning? Turning our attention to the prayer list uh, for a few minutes, um, Carolyn Parrish, um, she's been in the hospital with some heart problems this week, but she is back home and continuing prayers for her. And also, Wanda Frank had back surgery um, on Friday and is doing well but still in the hospital. Do we have anyone else to lift up with her? Karen? Betty Todd and also uh, the family of Mike Carrick. Betty Todd and the family of Mike Carrick. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, as we come here together to worship you, we're so thankful for the way that you have encircled us with your loving arms. There are many times, oh God, that we do not live as we should. We don't necessarily put you as the priority that we need to, oh God. We ask that you would continue to lead us and guide us. Help us to be your people always. At this time, we pray for the people of the world, the many people who are hurting and suffering right now. We just ask that you be with those that we have lifted up today. For you know the needs of all people. You give us strength, O oh God. You give us understanding. You give us comfort and love. And we thank you so much for the ways that you encircle us, for the fact that we have been made in your image. When we see other people, oh God, remind us that they too are made in the image of you. Help us to focus on the good and not the bad. Help us to show Christ-like love to all we have in our daily lives. Help us to continue to show understanding, kindness, and forgiveness. Help us to focus less upon ourselves and more upon what we can do for other people. Oh God, help us to live as we should. Help us to continue to be your people on this earth. And now we pray as Christ Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now turn together and pray our prayer of confession. O oh God, our eternal parent, like the school of children, we complain about the sufferings of this present time without considering the blessings of living under your care. Revive the hope that is in us and grant us the patience to wait for it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ promised in the gospel to all who repent and believe. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from their ways and live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Please join with me now for the 139th Psalm, Psalm of David. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You discern my going out, my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. You hem in behind and before. And you lay your hand upon me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I rise on the rings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, If I say, surely darkness will hide me, and the light becomes night around me. gifts of tithes and offerings. We ask that you would multiply them, bless the hands that have given them, that they might increase, that your kingdom upon this earth may grow. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Genesis, the 10th through the 19th verses, starting at the 28th chapter. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. 
and the angel of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all the people of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. And from Romans, the 8th chapter, the 12th through the 25th verses. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it's not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For to live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if that spirit you put to death, the misdeeds of your body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in the suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by his own choice, but by the will of the one that subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies, for in this hope we were saved. But hope is seen as no hope at all, but hope for what is already has. But if what we hope for we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Sanctify us through your words. Your words are true, O oh Lord. To set the stage on this morning's Old Testament lesson, a few weeks ago we talked about how Jacob got his brother's birthright. Maybe through a little trickery, but Esau comes in very hungry and sells his birthright to Jacob. However, some years pass, and what we've missed in between the scriptures is whenever Isaac is old and can no longer see, he calls Esau to bless him, but says, first, go get me some of the wild game that I like. Rebecca, upon hearing this, tells Jacob. So she fixes a meal. She has him to put fleece on his arms so that he will appear to be hairy like Esau. And then Jacob goes and receives his brother's blessings. Now we're at the moment 
that Jacob is fearing for his life. His brother is so mad that he has murderous intent at that exact moment. And so Rebecca sends him away to her own country. And it's in this moment that he is fleeing from everything he's known to go to see family that he has never met to start a new life. That he lays down and goes to sleep upon a rock in which he looks, uses for a pillow. And he has this vision of heaven. And this is what is often referred to in songs and hymns as Jacob's Ladder. Because he envisions all of these great things of God. And the Lord speaks to him and says that he will bless him. And this is at his lowest moment. Jacob kind of has a very up and down kind of life that you see if you read through the whole of Genesis. But at this moment, this is one of his lowest points. He's leaving home. His parents are or elderly, and he wonders if he will ever return at this exact moment. Maybe he was questioning if it was worth it trying these tricks to try to get these blessings, but yet God has bigger and better plans for him. And so then in Romans, we have this text on life through the Spirit. It's the fact that we are not obligated to the sinful nature, but we are obligated to the Spirit of God. You know, this is one of these moments in which it says, you know, there will be suffering. You know, I think that we've all had to make sacrifices over the last few months. You know, we know life is not going to always be rosy or perfect. But none of us could have imagined the first of the year the, the major changes that we would have. In fact, I remember um, writing a newsletter article to, to welcome in the new decade. And in this, I was kind of predicting um, a little bit, talking about the reminiscence of what I always come to mind was almost this image of the 1920s or something like that. Little did I expect how much things would change so quickly. And at times we probably feel like we are suffering or we're having to do things so differently that there's always something that is affecting us. You know, some people have jobs that this has put a whole lot more work on. Other people are desperately wanting to work and can't. This has put a lot of tension on not just the community, but the world. Yet we have this hope from God and this reminder that we are rooted in something that is far greater and far more fantastic than ourselves. Maybe like Jacob, we feel as if we are journeying into the old known. Maybe what we don't know is what is ahead of us. You know, I think on this, um, what was he thinking of using a, a rock for a pillow? In fact, I, I can't think of anything worse. However, if you're fleeing from your life at the last moment, and going out into the desert, it might be that having a rock behind your head could be the most comfortable thing available. Which kind of says where he's at at that exact moment, doesn't it? But even while he is slow, that doesn't mean that God is slow. That doesn't mean that God is not working through him. And so he's given this vision that will change his life. We know he goes forward to be very successful while visiting his uncle and will return and make up with Esau in the end. But then it will be him and his descendants that later travel to Egypt, which while that was the best thing at the time, would have long-lasting effect on the Israelites. So we can't 
forget where God is with us. Because we are children of God. We are co-heirs with Christ. You know, see, the biblical narrative makes such a big deal about inheritances of firstborn. Especially the firstborn male would be given a double portion of everything. And yet, in the Christian narrative in which we live of the New Testament, it says that we are joint heirs with Christ. That means that we are as much children of God as Jesus Christ. That's the kind of love that God has for us. It kind of helps to put it in perspective when we think about it in those terms. Because I think often, you know, we have people, of course, that we love more than others. We have the people that are closest to us. And maybe that's where we really feel true love. But here, we're told that we are joint heirs with Christ. How powerful is that? We are not the second or third born son or daughter. We are not somewhere on the long list, but we are joint heirs with Christ. And so if we suffer, and we probably will, we will also share in the glory of God because God has good plans for us. God has plans that we will continue to have hope. And we need to realize, I think, that we're in the presence of God. Jacob did not realize that he was in God's presence until the next day. What did he do? He took the stone that he had rested and then he made this pillar and he poured oil on it to consecrate it because he realized that he was in the presence of Almighty God. And I wonder when we come here and we come to worship and in, in different times in our lives, maybe we don't quite realize that we are in the presence of God, that we must be welcomed into his house, that it is the place where God dwells with us because he knows us and cares about us. And the future glory of his church is one that is so awesome to behold. But at times we must wait patiently. Maybe at times we want to shake our heads with the world and the things that's going on. Something interesting um, I saw on the internet this week was that the house from the Golden Girls TV show was for sale and you can buy it for a lot of money it's in California however what was kind of interesting about this story I remember years ago when I was a boy seeing the actual house which was a movie set at Disney's MGM theater which has still been torn down and so now I don't quite know what is being sold and what kind of advertisement that it is, but it seems to be something that is false that is there. And there's a lot of falsehoods in our world. There's a lot of things that don't make good sense. But what does make good sense is God and that God loves us and that we are in his presence. And so we cannot become weary but we must continue to show love and patience and kindness as we are in his house forever and ever. Let us pray. 
Oh God, we thank you for these words of Scripture. We thank you for the comfort that they bring to us and the fact that they challenge us. Help us to serve you in all that we do and help us to be your people always. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand for the good addition. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of Almighty God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.